All right, friends, David here from Learn Christmas Lighting, and here we are taking our look at X Lights in 2023. Uh, and we got the latest version. We've downloaded, installed it. Here comes the sun, doo 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 doo, coming in my window. Let's talk about step two in making your first show in X Lights controller settings and uploading. All right, so. Obviously, uh, you know, if you've been around this space for a while, you know, there's a billion opinions on how to do this. I'm going to show you my method um, that has worked well for setting up controllers. Um, so what I like to do is go to the controllers tab. And I like to do this after I've created my layout, which we did in the last video, which you can see here. Excellent. So I've set up some models. I'm ready to go ahead and bring in a controller or multiple controllers. In this case, what I'm going to do just to walk you through it before we do it is I'm going to do a controller just for the mega tree and I'm going to do a controller for the house stuff. Okay, two controllers. You could have more, you could have less, but the process is going to be the same. So we'll go to our controller tab. And again, I really like doing the layout first. And I like having a picture in my mind of what the layout looks like. In fact, I often will take a screenshot and put this in another window. Um, so I can see it on my other monitor, look at it on my phone, etc. I'll tell you why in a minute. In the controllers tab, we want to hit add ethernet. Most of the controllers you're going to add are ethernet based controllers. If you've got them set up and already on your network and in a valid IP address range that your computer can reach, then you can actually hit discover and they'll show up. For example, here, I have some actual, it's a little art and a controller for stage lighting that sits on my network and it's discovered there. I'm going to delete that one because that's not something we're using here. What we are using though, are ethernet based controllers. So I'm going to hit add ethernet. And there's a couple things you're going to do as you add a new controller. The first is if it didn't get auto found because you had it plugged in. Actually, you know what? Let's go plug in a controller. Then we can show you both ways. All right. That took longer than expected, but I'm back. So what we did um, is I got my Falcon plugged in to show you kind of how that works. But for this first controller, I want to show you, hey, if you don't have it already set up, here's what to do. So what you want to do is you can name it. Uh, you know, typically I'm going to name it the name of the controller. So I'm just going to go and make this, for example, a Culp K8. And then that just gives me the name. Then I go to vendor. I find the vendor of my controller. If your controller is not listed here, it's going to be a little more setup, uh, which we're not going to cover here, but we do cover inside of the Warren Christmas Lighting Academy details below. Um, then I grab my model. So it's a K8B in this case. I do like the Beagle Bone based ones. Um, we'll do with expansion. Um, if, if you're not sure, just do with expansion. Um, each controller is different, but if you add the expansion on there and you just don't have it and don't use it, that's fine. If you try to use the expansion, you have it, but then you don't set it up in X lights, then it's not going to work. So that's something. Um, then we're going to go ahead. I like to set up auto layout, auto upload. I like to do at least when I'm first setting up my show, once I kind of got things locked in, it, it does slow down the upload process a little bit. Um, so I like to turn that off. Auto size, full X lights control, like as many of these auto settings as your controller has and you can leave on, I recommend leaving them on um, because it really does make your life easier to just let X lights manage all the stuff. Back in the old days, which I know was only a few years ago, oftentimes we'd be like, oh yeah, set this up manually, do this, do that, set up a universe per port, you know, you know bring all your things in manually. Today, that's not necessary and it just wastes your time. Okay. The last thing is the IP address. So this is going to be unique to your controller. It's going to be dependent on your network setup. Um, in this case, I'm just going to make one up. So 192.168.0.14, oh no, 141 is the other controller, 156. I might be, might be on my network, might not be. Um, and then I'm going to save it. Now, if you filled this all out, right, and the IP address has some life at the other end, aka there's a controller, this dot will turn green. Okay. Um, if not, it will stay red. Now I want to show you the difference between setting this up manually and going ahead and using the discover. So we'll hit discover again. This time our Falcon will show up. Okay. Um, also, oh, this uh, controller that's out in my yard. Um, so 
I'm just going to delete the extra ones, delete the one that's out in my yard. And the cool thing about the, the discover is that it sets up the protocol. It's, it tells you, you know, how the controller is actually configured, sets the IP address. Life is good. Okay. Um, in this case, um, the model didn't fill out automatically, probably because it's an older F48. Um, and so most newer controllers should fill that all out automatically. Again, though, as many of these full controls as possible, as many of these auto options, leave those on. They only help you. Okay. Um, so now let's talk about assigning. So the biggest thing you do with controllers is you assign things from your layout to that controller. So in this case, I'm going to take my Culp K8. I'm going to hit visualize. And there is something at that IP address. What? Who knows? Um, and I want my mega tree to be on that controller. Now I have uh, 36 ports and this tree is 16 strings. So in its default setting, in its default layout, I don't need to change anything. Let's say I needed to though. Let's say I wanted it to just be eight strings. I would then go to the layout tab and this is not a complete guide, but under the model itself, I can now adjust some of the settings. So for example, it's a 360 degree tree. I'm gonna make it 180. Uh, and then it's 16 strings of 50 with each string strands being the amount of zigzags they do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make this eight strings of 100, but then two strands for, per string. So eight strings in a tree model of 100 with two strands per string is the same physically, you know, the physical look of the tree. It's 16 strings of 50. The difference is that you go up and then you come down with each strand back to the controller. Okay, so it's the same. It looks the same, you know, to somebody watching the show. It's one goes up and then the other comes back down. Um, and then it only takes up eight ports of 100 pixels. We can hit save. So now back to that visualize tab. I can drag that tree. It takes eight strings. So I put it to pixel port one. It takes up one through eight. Okay, then I'll go to my other controller. I'll hit visualize. And this is where I'll go ahead and check hide models assigned to other controllers. So now my tree goes away. And now I'm just going to take all of these props and I go, okay. So my first port might be two of those. My second port might be the other two. And then I've got my single lines, which I didn't set the amount of lights on them. So they all just say 50. Um, and I assign those up. So now this tells me where I'm going to plug in all of my different models. Not only that, but if you're using smart receivers, which can be a really great option, you can right click and hit smart remote, turn it to an A, a B or a C. Okay. So like my first four ports, I just got an A there. This one is not in port A, so I need to change it. Now that red notification goes away. This error will no longer show up um, and we're good to go. Okay, these guys too, you know, they're not in A, but I can drag them into A, right? Um, and it's really easy, really visual, works really well, allows you to set up those smart receivers. And I lost, oops, I lost one of them. Oops. So really this goes here. Let's say we have those together. Um, and this order, for example, if we have two models sitting on the same, you see there, I, I overlap it like this to go line one, line two. If they're sitting on the same port, the same smart remote, this is the order they plug in. Okay. It doesn't have to be left to right. It's just whichever way they plug in physically. Next thing we're going to do, the last thing we're going to do is upload our output to our controllers. This goes ahead and sets up our controller. Uh, depending on your controller, it may be fast. It may take a few minutes like the F48s here. They reboot um, the old ones, at least. I forget if the new ones do or not. Um, and then you're good to go. Okay. Um, other controllers like this Culp K8, I had auto upload configured. And so what that means is when I'm in my sequencer and I hook up some lights and I hit output to lights right here, it actually goes at that point. It's doing it right now. And it tries to upload to that controller. Now it says failed here and it took a minute. It kind of paused for a minute and froze because I don't have that controller uh, on the network, though it shows up green, which means there's something at that IP address, probably my kid's tablet. Okay, 
that's the basics of the controller setup. You want to do that after you do your layout. Um, other things to think about as you do get into your display is, uh, you know, we talked about setting the amount of lights per string, the amount of string, etc. cetera, um, like with our tree. You'll want to do that for each model as accurately as you can, but you can update these things later and re-render your sequences and be good, okay? Um, the biggest thing I would say is just to get this as accurate as possible, get things assigned to controllers as best you can, but understand you can change it later and it's not a big deal to do so. Um, that's one of the beautiful things about x -Lights is it really is cool with changes down the road. It works well um, and it is easy to do. Um, but until you put things on ports and upload that to a controller, you won't be able to control the physical lights. You'll just be in the computer with the sequencer, which, as I mentioned before, you can do. You can be in here, not set up any controllers. You can be in the layout. You can set up your sequencer and begin programming songs even before you've set up your layout. OK, um, you can go in that order. It's absolutely fine. So with that, what we're going to do dive into next is talk about the basics of sequencing. We're going to show you exactly what to do, and I'm really excited to do that with you. So if you've liked these videos, be sure to subscribe, catch the next one. Head over to LearnChristmasLighting.com, grab our free guide, the four things I really wish I knew before I began a Christmas light show. And whether you grab the guide or you're like, hey, this isn't my first year, I'm a little further along, but I still need more help, more depth, more uh, updated videos, then hey, we've got you covered. Inside the Learn Christmas Lighting Academy, which you can try out and start for just a dollar today, uh, and in the link below this video, um, what we do is we do that. We give you personalized help in our forums. It's really the best place, the one cohesive place to learn everything you need to know to make a great Christmas light show and continue it year after year. You can try it out for just a dollar. Check out that link below. Uh, I think or also probably here on the end screen. We'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks.